Hello, welcome to the Penyagaran Rohani SMS channel. Healthy greetings always, full of abundant blessings. Dear friend, let us begin this meditation by praying. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we praise you for your work of resurrection. You died, destroying death. And you rise, restore life. We beg you, be present in our midst, so that our hearts and minds will be opened by your word, the word that brings peace to our souls, the word that brings certainty to our doubts, the word that brings calm to our worries and anxieties, the word that brings courage for our fears, for you are the Almighty, now and for all time. Amen. Dear friend, the longest journey is not from earth to sun, but from mind to heart, that is, the journey to transform intellectual faith into spiritual faith. Intellectual faith is faith that believes in God, when it has seen the evidence. We can find this kind of faith from people's words, if I haven't seen the proof, then I won't believe it. Or in other words, see first then believe. Meanwhile, spiritual faith is faith that believes wholeheartedly in God, even though you haven't seen the results yet. We can find this kind of faith from people's words, I believe, God will definitely give me the best. That is proof of his love for me. Or in other words, believe first, then see the evidence. These two faiths invite us to self-correct about the faith we have and have lived so far. Do I have intellectual faith, so that I always want to see the evidence first, then can I believe? Or, do I have spiritual faith, so I always believe what will happen in my life, even though I haven't seen the proof? These two faiths are explained in the theme, Look first OR BELIEVE FIRST. Let's follow the discussion in the following two true stories. Intellectual Faith This story, taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Dear friend, Thomas is one of the twelve apostles of the Lord Jesus. He was along the way with the Lord Jesus. He had heard the Lord Jesus teach directly. He had seen the miracles performed by the Lord Jesus himself. 
He had also listened to the messages of the Lord Jesus regarding the suffering and death that he had to go through. His disbelief in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, so he needed proof, showed that Thomas did not really understand the message of his master. Apart from that, it was also because Thomas had his own expectations of his master. As a result, when the master had to die on the cross, Thomas fell into disappointment and lost hope. Like Thomas, when our hearts are grieving and our faith is shaken, we too can doubt God's word and lose hope. The Lord Jesus really understands the situation of our hearts. He appreciates our honesty that we doubt and need to be strengthened. The Lord Jesus never denounces our doubts. On the contrary, he is present to turn our hearts' doubts into certainty. Assurance that he lives and never breaks his promise. So, when darkness and fear envelop our lives, so that it makes our hearts tremble, let's not shake our faith. Learn from the lives of the apostles that God did not leave them alone, he did not even leave Thomas, a student who lacked faith. Always remember the human life cycle, which will never change or be different, namely, born, grow, die. Healthy and sick are two conditions that must be experienced, as with joy and sorrow. The question is, do we only believe and accept the Lord Jesus Christ in joy, without sorrow? Like the apostles, we will also experience difficult times in our lives. But we must be sure and believe that the Lord Jesus must always be present through the locked doors of our hearts and greeting us. Spiritual Faith This story, taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou shayest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Dear friend, the woman who had had a bleeding problem for twelve years, had gone from doctor to doctor, and tried every remedy they offered her. It was reported that not only did her health condition deteriorate, but she eventually lost all her money to the doctors trying to cure her illness. In this increasingly apprehensive condition of her life, something happened to her, namely, she heard about Jesus. She began to believe that Jesus could heal her, so she said to herself, if I just touch his robe, I will be healed. Acting on her conviction, she walked up to Jesus and touched his robe. Soon, the bleeding stopped and she felt inside her body that she was cured of the disease. Jesus, the true healer also stated that she was healed. Dear friend, there is always a way, if we want to try. Everyone has problems in their life, but the way to solve them is different. The woman heard the news about Jesus, then faith arose in her heart. As it is written that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 17.
Through the testimonies of many people, faith arose in the woman, and she began to walk in certainty. Here we can see that only through the testimonies of many people, the woman's faith grew stronger to meet Jesus, while Thomas, despite being convinced by ten of his close friends about Jesus' resurrection, apparently his faith remained shaky, even getting weaker. Encouraged by the strength of her faith, the woman was able to break through the thousands of people who were crowding Jesus. She did not care about her weak physical condition. She persisted and tried to touch Jesus' robe. The woman's eyes were only on Jesus. She doesn't care about the ridicule and humiliation of the people around her. Because her focus was on meeting Jesus, she gained strength. The woman believed that Jesus was able to do great things for her, even though she had never seen the miracles performed by the Lord Jesus, like Thomas, who for three years had always witnessed miracles performed by his own teacher. Dear friend, let's reflect for a moment. By looking at these two true stories, namely the story of the Apostle Thomas who lived based on intellectual faith, and the story of a woman who was bleeding for twelve years, who lived based on spiritual faith, we can determine which faith we should develop in our lives every day. For such faith is pleasing to God, and can bring about miracles. Let's look at the first type of faith, intellectual faith. What will happen, if we have intellectual faith? Intellectual faith has many considerations, and requires signs to believe, because this kind of faith always relies on one's own abilities. This faith is easily shaken, when hit by life problems that never stop. Why? Because faith like this thrives in our brain, a place where we are happy to sculpt our future as we please. Living with faith like this, makes us fight alone to achieve our personal goals and ambitions. What will happen when personal goals and ambitions are not achieved? This power of faith slowly weakens helplessly, causing us to become stressed and frustrated. Why is that? Because we don't involve God, the source of our strength, and we don't care about our neighbors, where we share the joys and sorrows of our lives. The question is, do we want to live with faith like this? Let's look at the second type of faith, spiritual faith. What will happen if we have spiritual faith? Spiritual faith doesn't have much reasoning, and doesn't need signs to believe, because this kind of faith always relies on God above all else. This faith does not waver, even though it is hit by life's problems that never stop. Why? Because faith like this thrives in the right place, namely our hearts. A place where God is pleased to be present to work with us. Living with faith like this makes us feel not alone. There is always a power beyond our will and ability, which guides and directs us to act. What's the result? Miracles always happen in our lives. Why? Because there is the power of God within us. The question is, do we want to live with faith like this? Remember this important message, life always offers many choices. So, what we choose, that's our life. Let us end this meditation by praying. Lord Jesus, your important message to Thomas, blessed are those who do not see but believe, is a very valuable gift for our spiritual faith, to keep believing in you, especially when storms of problems come to our lives. We beg you, walk with us like two disciples who are on their way to Emmaus, so that we can always feel your presence in all of our life's journey to the new Emmaus where we will enjoy an eternal banquet with the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friend, 
Thank you very much for visiting the Penyegaran Rohani SMS channel. What is the Penyegaran Rohani SMS? Penyegaran Rohani saling mengingatkan saja. In English, spiritual refreshment just remind each other. Or better known as Penyegaran Rohani SMS. If you want to watch devotional and spiritual songs on this channel, please just type Penyegaran Rohani SMS. Finally, to trust God in the light is nothing, but trust Him in the dark, that is faith.